tons of open headers here. A lot of USB. There's actually two USB 3.0 ports too, which is great. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm going to be checking out the MSI Meg X670E Tomahawk Wi-Fi motherboard. MSI did send me this sample, but I want you to know that any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you want to find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging, everything looks great, as you've probably come to expect with MSI motherboard boxes. On the back, that's where you get down to business and you can see all the key features that this motherboard has to offer. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and see what's inside. Here are all the contents. First up, we have your product literature consisting of regulatory information and a quick install guide. We have our stickers and labels here. We have two data cables. One's gonna have your 90 degree end, the other one's gonna be just your straight flush end. We have one M3 screw, properly labeled, three M2 lockers right here for your M.2 drives. And then you'll see we have our Wi-Fi antennas here. Lastly, we have the motherboard. Let's look at this in more detail. Here's a look at the board up close, front and center. You'll notice our AM5 socket for AMD CPUs, four DIMMs for DDR5 RAM, dual channel up to 6600 megahertz. Next, moving right along, we have our one and only Gen 5 NVMe M.2 slot right here. Then you'll see we have our one Gen 5 X16 PCIe expansion slot. Moving further along, you'll see we have our X1. This is gonna be PCIe 3.0. And we have two M.2 slots under here that are both Gen 4 speeds. Then you'll see, moving right along, we have two additional X16 Gen 4 expansion slots and one more Gen 4 NVMe slot right there. So everything looks really nice. A bunch of our headers and connectors, as you would expect, USB type C, right there, a bunch of USB, CPU power, motherboard power, the usual, Tomahawk logo and branding, the mag branding up there. Now let's look at it from the IO side. You'll see we have a flash BIOS button, display port HDMI, USB type C. Then we have a bunch of type A ports at different speeds, another type C port, 2.5 gig LAN, You'll see our Wi-Fi 6E support here and then a bunch of audio routing options. Moving right along, here's a quick peek at the back side of the board. We got some keep out zones, AM5 socket again. Try to give you some side angles, show everything up close. Here's a peek at the bottom side with our headers. Let's look at the other side with our headers right here. And then up at the top, see everything there. Now really quickly, before we get this installed, let's pop off some of these covers and look at everything in more detail. All right, so we got all the covers removed here. They do have the little plastic film on the back of the thermal pads and on the front of our port one. Make sure you remove those before use when you're installing your drive. Just a friendly recap, our M.2 one port is up to gen five speeds and then two, three, and four are all up to gen four speeds. Now let's go ahead, let's get this installed. All right, the PC's been built with the motherboard installed. Let's look at it up close. All right, here's the motherboard and all of it's fully installed. Glory. Let's just go through each connection option and how we configured this particular build. So first up, you're looking left hand corner. That's our HD audio. Tons of open headers here. A lot of USB. There's actually two USB 3.0 ports too, which is great. We have one down here we're not using. This is going to be USB 2.0. And then you'll see we have our front panel connectors there. Coming in at that 90 degree angle, that's our USB 3.0 that we are using. You might notice, maybe you don't, it's hard to see, but the plastic cover actually broke off of this. So it got stuck on this cable. I think it's due to the sheer amount of pressure. I had it installed that way first. So I've almost installed on 10 MSI motherboards and I've never had anything like that. Super strange. So nothing's broken, everything works great. It's just this cover broke off. So when I pulled this cable off, it exposes all the pins in here. So super interesting, never seen that before, but most likely just chalked it up to user error, which is strange. And then we'll move right along. You'll see USB type C, motherboard power. We have one of our fans connected up at the top. Maybe you can see in there, we got our RGB. 
And then we have some additional fans connected up there. And then our CPU power there. There's that USB 2.0 we have for our cooler with that built-in display, which looks really nice. So that is what's plugged in and connected right down there. So there's a quick look at the motherboard. Got our hard drive installed here. We'll be installing a Gen 5 drive there. But yeah, nice board. Everything looks great. It's working great so far. All right, first things first, let's look at the BIOS settings here. This is going to be the first screen you're going to be at once you enter into the motherboard BIOS. I'm going to give you a quick overview just showing you the different layout in both easy and advanced modes. You can get a feel for some of the features that you'll be able to dive deeper into once you get your PC up and running. This is the main screen again when you power on or restart, just hold down the delete key, you'll be able to enter into the BIOS. We got a quick spec sheet kind of up at the top going through our build parts and components some temps and voltages and some speeds right here now take note depending on your ddr5 ram you might see something similar right out of the box but you'll want to change that to get the um, fastest speed possible for your ram in my case it's 5200 megahertz so we got to toggle on our xmp profile one save reboot and we'll be ready with those faster speeds again this goes up to i believe 6600 megahertz so you can get some blazing fast overclocked ram speeds here we got game boost we can just toggle that on right here too if we wanted to activate game boost so turn that on or off boot priority this is the easy mode so there's just a lot of clicking icons and it's really nice you'll see cpu currently highlighted all of our specs here here's our memory and you'll see again, profile one, that's what we want. Storage, fan info. You'll see a help section here if you have any questions, you wanna learn about a different feature. Then we have our M flash here. We're not gonna go right now. We have a favorite section, five favorites you can add. So we can go expand one of those. There's nothing added yet. We have our hardware monitoring. So that's gonna take us into more advanced controls. So pick and choose what you want to see, what you want to tweak. So we'll just click through some of these for you. Everything charted out for you. You can see the RPMs for CP1, pump one, and system six. That's the exhaust fan. And then we can do all full speed, all set to default, all set cancel. So you can play around here, tweak it as needed. There's an about and help section. We can also exit out to go back. You'll notice we can toggle some other features on or off, FTPM 2.0, ERP ready, HD audio controller, RGB light control, AHCI if you want RAID settings, CSM versus UEFI, all of that can be found right there. Let's go back to CPU. And now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna click up here at the top, you'll see F12. Looks like a little snapshot option, and then we got our basically search and language functionality there. We're gonna go into advanced mode and you'll see things have changed down here. Now we have our settings. So we'll just go through this pretty quickly. You'll see system status here. We'll go back, we'll do our advanced settings. So look at all the features we have here, depending on what you want to configure. You might notice off to the right hand side, there's that helpful information for you. Kind of walking you through what the features are. We'll just click through a couple of these. See like USB config. So you can dive into your settings right there. Then we have our boot settings. Again, reference this over here if you have any questions, uncertain about something. Security settings. Then we can save and exit. We'll go back. I really like this graphic. It's pretty cool. And then we have our OC settings. So if you want to do normal, you'll see we also have an expert mode. All the different settings for you. There's the RAM, XMP enabled. Don't forget though, just easily, you can just click that and you'll be all set and ready to go. Voltage settings. And then we have additional settings down there. Again, that's gonna be the expert option, but there's the normal one if that's overwhelming. I think we got everything there. So then we got our M flash settings again, right in that corner, let's go back. You'll see our OC profiles, 
So we can set up different overclocking profiles here if you want. You can load them from a USB. There's a lot you can do in here. We got the hardware monitor. We already looked at that, but there it is again. And then you'll see, give it a try if you want to do beta runner. So got an NVMe self-test. And then you got sr dash I O V. I'm not even sure what that is, but if you want to do some virtualization, it looks like that would be right there within those settings. But you can learn more about it just reading off to the side. So there you go. That's a quick look at the BIOS settings, what you're able to click on and accomplish with this particular motherboard. There's that easy and advanced tab. So if you're looking for a setting and you don't see it, look up here and make sure you're in the advanced mode go to settings and hopefully you'll be able to find it somewhere within this menu. Moving right along, you'll also have access if you want to download MSI Center or Dragon Center. Both of those pieces of MSI software can be used to update your BIOS and drivers and all of that good stuff. We'll be looking at MSI Center. That's the better one out of the two in my opinion. We're looking at hardware monitoring right now. We can see some CPU stats here. You'll also be able to see a bunch of different RPMs and voltages and temps off on the right hand side. Just quickly browse that. So we'll go to the very bottom and you'll see we got our RAM voltages and we have our frequency here. So we have done our XMP profile one and now we're getting our 5200 megahertz for our DDR5. So nice to have that built in hardware monitoring if you wanna see some specs without going into the BIOS or downloading an additional piece of software. You also have access within MSI Center to download additional items. So in this case, I went ahead, I downloaded Mystic Light. So let's open that up and we'll have some RGB settings we're able to configure with our motherboard. So you'll see right here at the top, multiple profiles, game sync, ambient light, and Mystic Light settings. We can toggle that on or off, and then you can choose your parts and components that you want to link and sync together. So let's turn off the studio lights and let's see what we're able to control. So we'll get more options if we specifically go to the motherboard where we can pick and choose different headers that we want to control, or we can control everything. So in our case, we want all the headers to change to the same color. Rainbow by default, but let's go to flame right here. We can pick and choose our colors, the light speed, the brightness. Then we gotta hit apply, and you'll see that it changes not only to front fans, but our two fans up top on our cooler are also changing here. We won't look at all of them, but I'll just grab a couple really quick, because it's not the um, quickest to change, because you gotta hit apply every time. But you'll see as we do, Meteor is next. And for that one, I guess it's just, oh, there we go. It was really faint. I was like, is that just a blackout? All right, let's do stack. Let's see how this one goes. Some will be better than others. It depends on your fan too, right? There's just a lot of factors and variables. But we have stack there. Looks very similar to Meteor. Let's do one of our breathing ones. And again, our color right there. Currently, it's red by default. All right, and then we can do, let's do our lightning one. Let's see. Sounds exciting. Oh, cool. Oh, I like that. That's pretty sweet. Got that nice strobe to it. And then let's do maybe one more. Rainbow double flashing sounds good. Sounds like a winner. All right. Is that it? Rainbow, flash, flash. It's off a little bit too long for my liking. Let's see what happens if we do light speed. That changes anything here. I think it just makes the whole thing just a little bit faster. But you get the idea, right? Just pick and choose whatever lighting setting you want for your different parts and components. Should play nice together. If you're using your motherboard to control them all, and you'll have the options that drop down here again for each individual one. So not sure why this one, I didn't know we even had the option. Does it actually change the GPU color? Am I learning something new here? Huh, I guess there is. I did not know there's a little white on the inside of the GPU. That's amazing. 
That's wild. All right, so we can do the GPU as well, but if you want to do both together, then you'll see, depending on your components, you might have just a slightly more limited option here. But that's what you can do if you want to control everything using Mystic Light, you can get it within MSI Center. Lastly, within MSI Center, you'll want to go up to the support option here. I want to show you how you're able to update your system. So select Live Update. And from here, we have two options. We can scan. So if we hit scan, it's going to scan and try to find any additional updates for us with our drivers. In this case, we don't have any. We just have third party utilities. You can or can't download those. I prefer not to. Typically, it's just bloatware, in my opinion. But above this, if you have any updates, they'll show and you'll be able to see what the drivers are, that sort of thing. And there's also this advanced option. This is how you're going to be able to scan to find any major updates like the BIOS, which we did. Um, after we got everything installed. So there shouldn't be any updates. I wanted to have the latest and greatest BIOS for you at the time of this video, but you'll see if there are any updates here for your BIOS, you'll be able to conduct that and do that all from within MSI Center. So I highly recommend after you get your things up and running initially, go in here. If you ever want to update the BIOS, now would be the time. If it's not broke, don't fix it. But if you ever want to, for whatever reason, do it at this stage before you're too far deep into like getting your computer set up and then also update all of your drivers. Really easy to do right from here versus trying to piecemeal them together from MSI's website or even using like Windows Update. So definitely take advantage of that support section there in the live update feature, but I personally would avoid some of this bloatware. Don't forget that this motherboard is equipped with a Gen 5 NVMe slot. So I went ahead, I dropped in the Crucial T700 that has advertised read speeds up to 12,400 megabytes per second. Yes, you heard me correctly there. And you'll see our real world results here with Crystal Disk Mark. We got a score of 12,266 megabytes per second for our read speeds. And you'll see we got a score of 11,721 megabytes per second for our write speeds. So blazing fast speeds available with this motherboard if you have the right drive. So now let me share with you my final thoughts after using the MSI Meg X670E Tomahawk Wi-Fi motherboard. This has some of the latest and greatest out there. If you're looking to do a nice AMD build, you'll get the AM5 socket. So we should have a lot of good future proofing with that and our DDR5 and our NVMe uh, Gen 5 speeds too. Don't forget, they still give us three extra Gen 4 slots, which is amazing. So I like to think the potential with this board after maybe it ages out with your build is a really nice home media server storage, things along those lines. But anyways, for the foreseeable future, you'll enjoy having the X16 Gen 5 slot as well for any future GPU and maybe other accessories that you might need depending on what you're doing with your computer. So really happy with that. Tons of USB as well too. It's great to see a lot of different USB headers on this board and on the back of the motherboard itself. Great assortment of USB type A and our USB lightning 20 gig as they call it, but that's your USB uh, 3.2 Gen 2x2. Two two. So we got that USB Type-C port there. Wi-Fi 6E is fantastic. Bluetooth 5.3. So really feature rich. Some of the latest and greatest available out there. So really pleased with its performance overall. My biggest knock against this board is the first time I've had anything weird with any of the headers and that plastic cover on our USB 3.0 port coming off. But I'm gonna chalk that up to user error somehow. I'm not really sure. And it just broke off so cleanly. It must make me think that just maybe it wasn't right from the factory, but I don't know. I'm not going to point fingers. Haven't had any issues and it's still fully functional as it is, but just something I did want to mention. Also for me personally, I love 10 gig because I have a 10 gig network here and I hardwire everything. So I wish it had 10 gig, but I'm not faulting them for putting a 2.5 gig port out there for the average consumer, gamer, streamer, content creator, whoever you may be using this computer, that should be plenty for you you know, depending on your router and your network setup. But anyways, really pleased with this board overall for what it offers and for hopefully the protections that you have in the future to get you further down the road as you want to maybe upgrade some of your components as prices drop and as the technology continues to advance.